General anesthesia is a drug-induced state of unconsciousness produced by a process of controlled, reversible, depression of the central nervous system in which there is a lowered sensibility to stimuli from the environment and a diminished motor response to such stimuli. General anesthetics are drugs that produce reversible loss of sensation and consciousness. The key features of general anesthesia include several essential components. Unconsciousness refers to a reversible loss of awareness and the inability to respond to stimuli. Amnesia ensures that the patient does not recall the surgical or procedural experience. Analgesia provides an absence of pain perception during the procedure. Immobility suppresses motor responses to noxious stimuli, allowing the patient to remain still during surgery. Finally, autonomic stability involves maintaining stable physiological functions, such as heart rate and blood pressure often with the help of adjunct drugs. Then there is a triad of general anesthesia which simplifies these features by grouping its essential components into three primary effects. The triad are unconsciousness, analgesia, and immobility. These elements directly address the core goals of anesthesia during surgery. The cardinal features, the anesthesia triad and the reversibility we have discussed are observed during the whole process of general anesthesia as three phases. They are induction, maintenance and recovery. Induction is the period from the administration of anesthesia to the achievement of effective surgical anesthesia. Maintenance ensures sustained surgical anesthesia and ends when anesthesia administration is ceased. Recovery refers to the time from discontinuation of anesthesia until the patient regains consciousness and protective physiologic reflexes. At any point of time during anesthesia, the depth of anesthesia monitoring is important to ensure adequate surgical anesthesia as well as safety. For this, Gettle's stages of anesthesia was developed by Dr. Arthur Ernest Gettle to outline the observable signs of ether anesthesia in patients. At the time, monitoring tools like pulse oximeters and capnographs were unavailable, so anesthetists relied on physical signs to gauge the depth of anesthesia. The four stages of anesthesia, as described by Gettle, are not as commonly observed in modern anesthesia practice due to advancements in anesthetic agents and monitoring. This diagram demonstrates the physical signs observed during each stage of anesthesia. Stage 1, or analgesia, begins with anesthetic administration. The patient experiences pain relief and may feel drowsy but remains conscious and communicative, ending when they lose consciousness. Minor procedures can be performed at this stage. Stage 2 or delirium starts after the loss of consciousness and is characterized by irregular breathing, pupillary dilation, increased muscle activity, coughing, gagging, or vocalization. Reflexes may be exaggerated, and heart rate and blood pressure can increase. This stage is minimized in modern practice. Stage 3 or surgical anesthesia provides the necessary depth for surgery. Breathing becomes regular, muscle tone decreases, and reflexes such as corneal and laryngeal reflexes are suppressed. This stage is subdivided into planes. Plane 1 is adequate for minor procedures with some reflex responses. Plane 2 is optimal for most surgeries, with full unconsciousness and no reflexes. Plane 3 is suitable for invasive procedures, with profound muscle relaxation and absent reflexes. Plane 4 represents a dangerously deep level, leading to respiratory and cardiovascular depression. Stage 4 or medullary paralysis occurs when anesthesia is excessively deep, and the medulla oblongata, which controls vital functions like breathing and circulation, becomes severely depressed. This stage is life-threatening and requires immediate intervention. Modern techniques aim to maintain the patient safely in stage 3 while avoiding stages 2 and 4. 
Now let's briefly look into how the drugs used for general anesthesia is classified. General anesthetics are administered via two routes, inhalation and intravenous. Inhalational agents are either gas or volatile liquids. The inhalational agents are usually used for maintenance of anesthesia but can also be used for induction. Intravenous agents can be classified as rapid-acting drugs which are used for anesthesia induction and slower-acting drugs. The slower-acting drugs are needed for amnesia like benzodiazepines and analgesia like opioids. Ketamine a dissociative drug provides hypnosis, analgesia and amnesia. We can also include muscles relaxant as part of intravenous agent too. In the subsequent videos, we will study all these drugs one by one.